Greetings everybody, welcome back to Weekly Wildlife Wisdom. As so far, I've been your host, Zero Yeti. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first animal week being the brown rat. Also known scientifically as Rattus norvigicus, or more commonly known as the common rat, the street rat, the sewer rat, the wharf rat, the Hanover rat, the Norway rat, or the Norwegian rat, is a widespread species of rat, originating from the plains of northern China and Mongolia. Uh, they began to spread to other parts of the world sometime during the Middle Ages, and in, they are now an invasive species found throughout nearly every landmass on Earth, aside from Antarctica, the Arctic Circle, some isolated islands, the Canadian province of Alberta, and parts of New Zealand and Australia. Here they inhabit forests, wetlands, grasslands, agricultural areas, uh, sewers, garbage dumps, and all manner of ships, other vehicles, and buildings. Uh, brown rats are nocturnal and highly social creatures, forming groups that are sustained on a dominance hierarchy. Uh, each group is led by a dominant male and has its own territory, which they aggressively defend. Their burrows typically have one to two exits, along with rooms for nesting and food storage. Uh, the area around the burrow has numerous scent marked roots that are used for foraging and allow them to escape potential threats. Uh, they are omnivorous with a very broad diet that is known to include grains, seeds, nuts, fruits, grasses, carrion, insects, eggs, paper products, bark, soap, honey, beeswax, small reptiles, fish, small birds, amphibians, and small mammals including other rodents. Brown rats are a key prey species for many reptiles, birds, amphibians, fish, and mammals. Brown rats reach around 10 to 22 inches in, or 25 to 52 centimeters in length and around 5 to 36 ounces or 140 to 1,000 grams in weight, with males being typically larger than females. Uh, they sport a typically brown to brownish gray coat, however the animal can vary from white to red to nearly black in color depending on the specific locale. Brown rats are polygandrous, with both males and females having multiple mates. Brown rats are cooperative breeders that may breed in large groups throughout the year, and the gestation period lasts from 22 to 24 days, yielding around 8 young, which are born underdeveloped and extremely small, weighing around only 5 grams in weight. The pups open their eyes around 14 to 17 days old, the young feed upon their mother's milk during the first three to four weeks of their lives, after which they leave the nest. Uh, these animals also practice collective nursing, and offspring of different females often live together in the same nest, cared for by various adults. The age of reproductive maturity is, on, is around three months old for males and four months old for females. Under ideal conditions, a brown rat may live upwards of four years. Electrophorus electricus, also known as the common electric eel, is the best known species of electric eel, and until the classification of two additional species in 2019, was considered to be the only species of electric eel. Despite its name, it's not an a, a true eel, but rather a knife fish that is named to the fresh waters of the Guyana Shield throughout the countries of Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana. Electric eels are nocturnal obligate air breathers which inhabit quiet, slow-moving waters of oxbow lakes, streams, pools, and flooded forests, where they feed primarily upon fish, crustaceans, insects, and fallen fruit, but they also feed upon smaller vertebrates such as amphibians, reptiles, and small mammals like certain rodents and marsupials. They are themselves, albeit rarely preyed upon by otters, caimans, crocodiles, fishing birds, and larger cats. Reach around 6 to 8 feet, in, or 2 to 2.5 meters in length, and around 45 pounds, or 20 kilograms in weight, the electric eel has a slender snake-like body and a flattened head. Its thick, scaleless skin is generally dark gray to brown in coloration, and its underside is a yellow-orange color. It lacks pelvic and dorsal fins, and relies on its elongated anal fin to help maneuver throughout the water. Uh, three specialized electrical organs, the main electrical organ, the hunter's organ, and the sac's organs, make up around 80% of the fish's body. Uh, the remaining vital organs are tightly packed within the anterior or front part of its body. 
Electrical organs create a weak and both weak and strong electrical currents. Up to 800 volts. And these are utilized for defense, hunting, communication, and navigation. However, the stronger electrical charges can quickly exhaust the animal. Uh, mating occurs during the dry season. During such a time, males typically construct nests out of saliva and mud, where one or more females will lay around uh, 1,200 to 1,700 eggs each. Males will guard their nests and offspring until the rainy season arrives. Under ideal conditions, the electric bill may up live upwards of 20 years. And then we have Coconanella septempunquata, more commonly known as the seven spot ladybird, seven spot ladybug, or C7 beetle, is a species of ladybug which is originally endemic to the mainland Europe and the Middle East. But thanks to humans, has spread in the spread of agriculture, it can now be found throughout North America, mainland Africa. Mainland Asia, Australia, Japan, Indonesia, Madagascar, Cyprus, Malta, Sri Lanka, and New Zealand. Uh, here they dwell in a range of habitats including grasslands, meadows, steppe, gardens, forests, parks, marshes, and agricultural fields. Although both seven-spot ladybugs, larvae, and adults mainly eat aphids, pollen, and nectar, when aphids are not available, these ladybugs are also known to feed upon other insects such as thrips, white flies, jumping plant lice, leaf hoppers, and on the eggs of some beetles and butterflies. Reaching around 0.3 uh, to 0.5 inches or 7.6 to 12.7 millimeters in length, adult seven-spot ladybirds have round bodies with black heads and abdomens and red thoraxes, while the larvae are brownish gray in color with four pairs of bright orange splotches across their bodies. Their distinctive spots and conspicuous colors warn of their toxicity, making them unappealing to predators. The species can secrete a fluid from their joints and their legs, which gives them a foul taste. A threatened ladybird may both play dead and secrete an unappetizing substance to protect itself. The seven-spot ladybird synthesizes toxic alkaloids in oxide cochineliae and its free base pre cochineliae Depending on sex and diet, the spot size and coloration can provide some indication of how toxic the individual insect is to potential predators. Breeding occurs from spring to fall, with seven spots often mating with several partners per day. Females lay a cluster of 10 to 30 eggs on aphid-rich vegetation immediately, uh, or in fall they may store the sperm and lay the eggs in spring so their larvae will have a more robust food supply. Eggs hatch after around 10 days as larvae and then eat and grow for another 21 to 30 days before entering the pupal stage, which lasts from 7 to 15 days. Adults overwinter in a state of uh, diapause or dormancy in leaf litter, dense vegetation or under tree bark, and in other sheltered spots. Ladybugs are unusual amongst insects with complete metamorphosis. Um, because both the larvae and the adults occupy the same spaces and eat the same thing. Under ideal conditions, the seven-spot ladybug may live upwards of a year. Next up is the blue whale, Balanoptra musculus. It is a marine mammal and a baleen whale in the family Balanopteridae. An endangered species, the blue whale inhabits all oceans worldwide, and many, with many populations migrating between their summer feeding areas near the poles and their winter breeding grounds near the tropics, but some populations choose to reside in the same waters year-round. They are more solitary than most other whales and often are seen traveling alone or in small pods of two to five individuals. However, during their migration, they may gather in groups of up to 60. Blue whales are filter feeders. Their diet consists almost exclusively of krill and plankton, though they may also occasionally eat small fish. As adults, blue whales are only known to be preyed upon by the orca and humans, uh, though infants may also be hunted by large sharks such as great whites. Uh, human whaling nearly eradicated the blue whale species, uh, but has since started to make a comeback. Reaching up to 110 feet, or 33.5 meters in length, and 
418,500 pounds or 190,000 kilograms in weight, the blue whale is one of if not the largest animal to have ever existed, with only certain sastosaurid ichthyosaurs and the ancient whale Pyrocetus being comparable in size. They are a slate to grayish blue with molted uh, lighter spots, particularly on the back and the shoulders. The underside often becomes covered in microorganisms, giving them the belly a giving their belly a yellowish tinge. Because of this, blue whales are sometimes called sulfur bottoms. Uh, they have a small sickle-shaped dorsal fin and a large tail with long but thin flukes. Very little is known about the mating of these large whales, and after an 11 to 12 month long pregnancy, which is unusually short for an animal of this size, mothers will typically give birth to one to two young in warm, low latitude waters in the winter months after the adults return from their high latitude feeding grounds. Young are weaned after around seven to eight months, and under ideal conditions, a blue whale may reach sexual maturity around eight to 10 years of age, and they have upwards of a hundred. The pancake tortoise is a species of flat-shelled tortoise in the family Testinuidae, which is native to the African nations of Tanzania, Kenya, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. Here they tend to inhabit scrublands, woodlands, and grasslands with prominent hills and rocky outcrops up to 6,000 feet or 1,800 meters in elevation. They are a social species which lives in colonies clustered around a chosen rock phase or series of caverns and crevices where they rest during the night and the heat of the day, emerging during the morning and afternoon and evening to search for water and food, such as fruits, grasses, leaves, and other vegetation. Pancake tortoises are preyed upon by mongooses, wild dogs, honey badgers, and birds of prey. These tortoises are fast and agile climbers, and they're Flat, surprisingly flexible shells allow pancake tortoises to crawl into narrow rock crevices to avoid predators. Reach around 5 to 7 inches in length and around a pound or 0.45 kilograms in weight, the pancake tortoise is one of the oddest and most interesting Chelonians. Chelonians. Um, as previously mentioned, they have an unusually thin, flat, and flexible shell with a highly ossified lump at the rear. The carapace is typically brown with a variable pattern of radiating dark lines on each scute that helps them camouflage. The plaster is a pale yellow with a dark brown seam, well, dark brown seams and light yellow rays, and the head, limbs, and tail are yellow brown. The breeding season occurs from January to February, during which time males will compete for females. Nesting typically occurs during July and August, during which time a mother will lay eggs of about 2 inches in length. In a nest cavity, she is built in loose sandy soil. She will lay one egg, and then after 4 to 8 weeks she may lay another, and then perhaps another. After a 4 to 6 month incubation period, the young hatch under ideal conditions of pancake tortoise may have upwards of 35 years. Next up we have the trumpeter swan which is a species of North American swan which once ranged from Alaska to Mexico but is now found in more isolated patches throughout Alaska, Western Canada, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Nebraska, Utah, Arizona, South Dakota, Wyoming, Arkansas, and around the Great Lakes. Uh, here they inhabit ponds, marshes, undisturbed lakes and bays, pristine woodland and wide, slow rivers uh, where they live in smaller flocks and feed upon insects, crustaceans, and small fish, as well as aquatic plants. Trumpeter swans are themselves eaten by bears, golden eagles, wolves, coyotes, wolverines, red foxes, and bobcats. Reaching some 4.6 to 6 feet, or 138 to 180 centimeters in length, and 15 to 38 pounds, or 7 to 17.2 kilograms in weight, with a 6 to 10.2 or 185 to 310 centimeter wingspan, the trumpeter swan is the largest extant species of waterfowl and the largest flying bird native to North America. The adult trumpeter swan's plumage is entirely white, and like most swan cygnets, the young of the trumpeter swan have a light gray plumage and pinkish legs, gaining their white plumage after about a year. The feet, bill, and tarsals are black, 
and they have a pink they have pink to red mouths which can be seen uh, as a small pink or red line and a grin on the bill. Trumpeter swans are monogamous and mate for life. During the mating season from March to May, trumpeter swans will reunite with their former mates or begin the process of courtship to secure a mate. This courtship display typically consists of the pairs simultaneously spreading and raising their wings, uh, quivering their wings, head bobbing, and trumpeting, hence their common name. Both parents will spend two to five weeks building a large nest out of aquatic plants, grasses, sedges, and branches, which can range in size from 1.2 to 3.6 meters in diameter, they are usually, which are usually surrounded by water. Once the nest is complete, the mother will lay four to six eggs. Incubation lasts from 32 to 36 days uh, and is done mainly by the female. The young are precocial and spend their first 24 hours in the nest, then begin to swim. They fledge after 91 to 119 days and are independent after one year. Under ideal conditions, the trumpeter swan may live upwards of 30 years. In our extinct animal week is Dinopithecus, which is an extinct genus of very large primate, closely related to the baboon, uh, modern baboons, that lived from the Pliocene to the Pleistocene epoch. Uh, throughout South Africa and Ethiopia some 5 million to 12,000 years ago. First remains of Dinopithecus, consisting of a partial skull, were unearthed from a limestone cave in what is the Transvaal region of South Africa. Uh, and they were described and named by British paleontologist Robert Broom in 1937. Uh, more remains, including teeth and skulls, would be recovered from various other South African caves, as well as the Matebatu Formation of Ethiopia. Like all baboons, Dinopithecus were a fair amount of sexual dimorphism, with females being smaller and estimated to reach around 3.3 feet or 1 meter tall at the shoulder when on all fours, and 65 pounds or 30 kilograms in weight whereas males may have reached up to 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder when on all fours, and around 170 or 77 kilograms in weight. This makes Dinopithecus over twice the size of the largest extant baboons, and one of the largest primates to ever live. Like modern baboons, Dinopithecus likely lived in groups and may have numbered dozen, many dozens of individuals. Based off of tooth wear and isotopic analysis, it appears that Dinopithecus ate very few leaves and grasses, and instead primarily fed upon fruits, nuts, insects, and other invertebrates, as well as smaller vertebrates, such as birds, reptiles, and in particular, other mammals. As always, take care to my guys, gals, and my pals. Uh, take care and have a wonderful day.